You don't speak Spanish or no hablas inglés? No problem. We have included subtitles for English, Spanish, Portuguese and French. I was, I think, a teenager, so maybe either 15 or 16 when the revolution happened and when the life of every Romanian changed drastically. People were killed, run over by military cars and everything. We didn't know anything about that. Some people were swimming across the Danube, uh, running into Bulgaria. Or Hello, Tudor. Uh, Hello. Thank you very much for uh, taking part in the Getting to Know Humanity project. Uh, mm. Introvert or extrovert? Introvert. Sex or chocolate? <laughs> uh, sex. <laughs> Cat or dog? Cat. Uh, big city or small town, small town life? Big city. Friends with benefits or stable relationship? A stable relationship. Hawaii or Alaska? Hawaii. <laughs> Backpacking or hotel? Hotel. Now, for the viewers who don't know you, can you introduce yourself really quickly? Yeah, okay, so I'm Tudor. I am 47 years old. I live in Bucharest now, uh, Romania. Most of my life I have been working in the uh, non-profit sector. Most of the stuff that I've done in my life has to do with training and education for various target audiences. I am single now, that's basically it. So when we talked and got to know each other, you told me that you've grown up still in the communist times so could you tell us about your experiences yeah i was i think a teenager so maybe either 15 or 16 when the revolution happened and when the life of every romanian changed drastically i would say now for the better even though there are some people that are nostalgic about what it was like before and i would like to describe a little bit what it was like before because people don't realize what they are actually nostalgic about I didn't know a lot of the things that were happening that were going on, like the secret police and how careful you had to be when you were talking about the situation in the country. You had to be very careful about discussing it with anybody. But I didn't know this because I was just a teenager. However, I do remember what it was like to like not have electricity and hot water for months. We didn't have heating in winter, it was very, very low and by law, uh, your, our apartments were like mostly like between 14 and 16 degrees Celsius in winter inside. Mm -hmm. So everybody was wearing thick clothes and a cap. And I was doing my homework at the light of a candle because we didn't have electricity in the evening. It was called the way that the authorities were describing this as a, was a way to save money so that Romania could pay its foreign debt. But obviously the reasons were different. There was no food. All the food was basic food was rationalized. So you had to go and stay in line and for hours for anything that you wanted to buy. But sometimes they would bring things in. So for example, meat, which was very, very rare. Uh, people would hear that, oh my God, they're going to bring meat at this supermarket. So you had to go and there was, imagine a line of hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. So you had to go and stay in line and wait for two hours until you get to the front and you could buy a little bit of it. It was given in small portions so that we will be enough for more people. And then if you wanted to buy some more, you would go back to the end of the line and you would do the whole thing again. So sometimes when you were buying, for example, oranges or bananas in winter or meat, um, that was the routine. Could you explain like how a typical week looked like? Yeah, from what I remember, it was just like mostly school for me. In the weekends, sometimes my family would go out for picnics. Yeah, I remember my dad just taking us on a trip during the weekends. The weekend was just one day, right? Because the Saturday was a working day or a school day. Oh, mm -hmm. I remember how happy I was when we switched. It was the last years of my high school, yes, when we switched over to five days a week. Right after the revolution, it was amazing. We were working and going to school six days a week. And how long, like from what time to what time did you go to school usually? It was pretty early, but some of our schools were going in two shifts. I would go to school, I would start at eight o'clock, I think, and finish maybe at about two, so that there was an afternoon shift. I was doing three shifts at some point, so we were starting really early like some kids were starting at seven and then my school was doing three shifts which was crazy because some kids were finishing at nine how would you describe like the feeling of the people were they happy were they unhappy what do you think I guess the vast majority of people didn't know what it was like otherwise my parents were pretty intellectual people who had read a lot and they also traveled a little bit some of our friends for example ran away they fled Romania my best childhood friend who I was in love with at that time you know childhood soulmate sort of her parents actually fled she now lives in america but her parents actually ran away from the country i don't know exactly how they did it 
Some people were swimming across the Danube, uh, running into Bulgaria, or I don't know. There was a lot of crazy stories that I don't know directly, but her family actually fled. And I remember when she, the mother of this friend of mine, called us at like 2 a.m. And I was in my bedroom and I remember my mother waking up, going to pick up the phone. And then she told me, oh, it's Nicoletta's mother. She's calling us from the States. And I even now remember that she was asking my mother, how are things like in Romania? And my mother had to tell her something like, well, you know, things are the same. Nothing has changed, but she couldn't tell her anymore because you had to be careful about what you were saying on the phone. Yes, of course. So, yeah, but most people didn't know better. Like they didn't know what else to compare with. You were only allowed to travel in communist countries. So my parents traveled to, for example, Hungary or the, East Germany, Russia, uh, other Soviet countries, but they had never traveled to Western Europe. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult to get to one of those countries. Like, can you tell your experiences during the revolution times? Yeah, I had some stories. The revolution in itself was very, very intense and amazing. And I just remember the revolution basically started in Timisoara with a little bit of an uprising because a German ethnic minister or pastor was kicked out of his church or something which the communists made the mistake of doing and there were some people actually going out to protest against him which was very very rare anyway this is all like 1989 at the end of the year in december so they had some protest and then they started to protest more and more in timishwara and uh, we didn't have it on the news or something but there were just rumors and then there was a big protest in bucharest in the evening of the 21st where actually people were killed run over by military cars and everything we didn't know anything about that. And then the dictator had the stupid idea to gather a huge rally in his favor, in, like to support him on the morning of the 22nd of December. And that was live on TV. My mother was working and me and a friend of mine from the neighborhood, basically we were watching TV, I was at home. And then I remember that it was on TV you could hear some noises in the background. So there was this huge square filled with people and the TV cameras were broadcasting from back and they were sh uh, showing the balcony where Ceausescu was giving his speech and the balcony is right here you can actually see it in one of the buildings here in the old senate and at some point you could hear some rambling in the background and at that point some people started to shout against him suddenly in that big crowd that was shipped there by buses from all the big factories around in Bucharest to support him and so you could see on tv that Ceausescu was getting a little bit confused one person behind him came, whispered something in his ear and turned and went inside the building. And it was very unusual. And Shashasa was like, wait, dear comrades, wait a minute, and he was stuttering. And then the transmission went, boom, they cut the live transmission. And we didn't know what was going on. But at that point, even though it wasn't on TV, later on we realized that Ceausescu had gone in the building, inside the building, exactly at the same time as people were breaking in on the ground floor through the main door. Ceausescu ran up the stairs where a helicopter picked him up. People broke in the balcony and they started to throw outside the books with his names and everything and they started to burn them. His painting, his portraits, and they started to, uh, to burn them. And then the crowd suddenly, like, it was like a big rally. It was like tens of thousands of people. They started to shout freedom, 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 down with communism, down with the dictatorship. That was not on TV. The TV was not working anymore at that point. At some point, they went, they went to the TV station, they conquered the TV station, and then the transmission began by this huge crowd of people in the studio saying, we're free, Ceausescu ran. And so they got over the cameras and they started to broadcast. And how was the transition after the, um, the revolution? How fast did it go? Like, what were your feelings? There's things that I remember, like for example, how we started to have candy in our shops because we didn't have lollipops or chewing gum or something. It was very difficult to find them. Like candy and uh, Haribo bears, the gummy bears and all that stuff. And I remember when they started to appear in shops. We started to have food. We started to, again, have more and more TV. They didn't cut the electricity anymore and we had hot water, foreign movies. Michael Jackson had his first concert in Romania. He was the first big major artist that came to Romania. 92, I think, or something, very early on. It was a big event. Everybody was talking about it. I remember being able to find more clothes in shops. The political situation was very obviously unstable uh, for many years. There were a lot of like crazy things happening that I maybe didn't know what they were about and I didn't really understand them for a while. The voting, when we started, when we went to vote for the first time, when we vote for the first president after revolution, I remember that. So 
Earlier, you used to tell me that uh, you're also a gay activist and you're mm -hmm. probably the first one in Romania. Can you tell us a story? Thank you so much for watching this video and for your support. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much.